Hello, this is episode 158 of Let's Plant. My name is Chuck. The last time you saw me, I was out in the garden doing some stuff, finishing up on some of the landscapes. And I'm clearly in a different space right now. I'm currently in my home office. No reason really, apart from the fact that I am just working on a few things on my videos. I'm currently editing and I decided to record the intro in here. So earlier this week, I was doing a lot of things off screen between episodes. I was just looking over at the Philippines, removing some of the dead leaves because I wanted to prepare for the colder months because right now the temperatures are dropping, which means that when it starts raining, you know, during our winter, we tend to have more rain than usual, which means a lot more humidity. And I wanted to be ahead of the rut by removing all of the dead leaves underneath the plants. Now, while doing that, I noticed that some of the plants with flower stalks have lots of aphids on them. I wanted to contain the spread, or at least I wanted to make sure that I get ahead of the infestation before it spreads. So I removed all of the flower stalks in the Philippines. That way, there's no way for the infestation to spread out onto the other plants. This reminds me a lot of our current situation with the COVID-19. At least according to the news, the, our state of Victoria here in Australia is finally considering doing a community quarantine lockdowns and we're kind of expecting it to drop sometime today today is Saturday no today is Sunday 22nd of March so we'll see what happens and I really hope it happens now because you know lots of cases are popping up and we do not want it to further spread but anyway, as I said, I was doing lots of things behind the scenes, cleaning up and stuff. And I think now is a good time to step back a bit, see what we have in our garden. Do a little tour because I haven't done one in quite a while. So please, make yourself comfortable, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and new intro. So we're starting off with this far left section along the fence, which I call my Agavoidis area. And it is named as such. Well, that's not the final name yet. You'll have to help me think of a, of a fitting name for it. In any case, that's the working name for now. The project code name, if you will. So as I was saying, the Agavoidis area is on the far left along the fence. It is supposed to contain, as the name suggests, lots of Agavoidis hybrids and cultivars. I also wanted to include some of the bowl-shaped plants, so basically anything that's not caranculated or frilly, anything that's very dense, bowl-shaped or sharp agavoidis-like leaves, those would be in that area. And I'm currently thinking of a layout that I would like to do there. For the most part, I think I'm going to work with a lot of contrast in texture and colors, and at the same time, maybe experiment with a bit of heights. Right now, I have a little bit of height thing going on with this large tall pot of Senecio Berbertonicus and I think it was surrounded by a bunch of uh, the dwarf blue chalk sticks or the Senecio serpents and now that I'm looking at it if I'm going to add a lot of arrangement in front with the agavoides and the various bowl shaped plants I might need to further raise the back so one of the vague ideas that I have in my mind right now is to create some sort of a mini corner shelf at the back that way I would be able to further raise the Senecio Barbatonicus. And besides, if you look closely at the chalk sticks, they're trying to stretch, looking for more sunlight, which means that the current setup is not good enough for them. Either way, I might need to raise the back portion anyway. So that's my rough plan for the Agavoide section for now. But until then, I would have to think about what I'll be doing in terms of the shelf. And right next to it is the Philippines and for those of you who did not get the reference or is just wondering about the name, yes, I'm a Filipino and the name Philippines is a portmanteau of the word Philippines where I was born and freelies or you know the shape of the leaves, the freely, the ruffles and stuff because I collect a lot of those. So Philippines is my display area for most of my freely and caranculated plants and unofficially I I used to call it my Gibiflora display section because a lot of the plants in there are Gibiflora hybrids or cultivars. But as I was working on it, I was starting to mix a bunch of other large plants, which meant that it's no longer just purely Gibiflora hybrids. So Philippines it is. 
Now, apart from those large echeveria, I was thinking of adding some ground cover in between. One of my top choices at the moment would be the Fidimus Furious or the Dragon's Blood. I wanted something that's low growing. I do not want it to uh, go higher. I was originally thinking of using some Cedum Mexicanum. The, it's bright lime yellow, but under shade, they tend to just stay green. No yellows. I prefer the yellow color as opposed to just green because having a lot of green would not make the some of the green echeveras pop out so the dragon's blood being um, mahogany or maroon or almost purple i think that would make a good contrast against the rest of the plants and at least it would provide uh, some sort of anchor a base you know to make things look more 3d because if you have a dark base and bright things popping out on top of it the darkness and the darkness and the brightness would make it feel that or seem that those two things those two layers are further apart if the dragon's blood are planted in between all, all of those areas, that means that they would be getting a lot more shade than usual so they would at most turn a bit green but still very dark green which still works for me and besides if you are unable to see them because they are deep down in the canopy a little bit of green doesn't really matter but if they are more towards the outside of the area where they are more visible then i would really like seeing the purples the bright purples and moving along further to the right we have the stream the succulent stream i think i call it the river heading into the reservoir the lake and before it finally trickles down into the sea of blue this stream is composed of Echeveria secunda gloca, tiny blue plants that you see here. It is situated on top of a little hill that I made which I call the hatchery. And it is named as such because I have a bunch of frilly pups that I planted uh, around that area. And through the years I have had lots of success growing my frillies in that spot. It's mainly because it is right next to the, our western fence which means that they are directly illuminated only during the morning and overhead during noontime. When the sun goes further out to the west in the afternoon, those plants get shaded by the fence. So at least they no longer get direct sunlight during the afternoon, which means that a bit protected from the harsh sun for at least half of the day. Something that I must really be doing on this stream is to rip out all of the gloca, remove the dead leaves and replant them in. So as you can see, a lot of them have dead leaves collecting underneath and you know they have been here for over a year now a bit over a year I, I can't remember exactly I usually do this sort of maintenance at least once a year it isn't necessary but in time those dead leaves would be harboring a lot of insects a lot of mealybugs and stuff and they also trap a lot of moisture in them and that might lead to rot on some of the plants and also if no infestation occurs or no rotting occurs there's also the matter of the visual issue where we have lots of dead leaves in between, only a few greens, you know, there's spots of green then surrounded by rings of uh, brown and black, which is very unsightly. So yeah, a bit of cleanup is something that I would like to do relatively soon. So if we follow this stream down, we would see a little bit of lake and waterfall action going. Surrounding the stream in the bowl on either side, on the far end, there's a clump of Raptocidum Francesco Baldi, and in front we have a clump of Cido Mexicanum, Echeveria Violet Queen, and there's an Echeveria Lila China sitting on top. So at least these plants are doing well. I might have to reset some of the Francesco Baldi because they are uneven, or at least maybe I could mix it up with some of the Graptocidum Bronze. Just to work on the textures a bit, make them more, there's going to be a bit of transition because the Francesco Baldi tends to grow taller and they start to trail once they get tall enough. So I need a bunch of smaller, shorter plants to surround them just to break the abruptness from short plants to tall plants on the waterfall itself we have some trailing plants care of the sidum burrito and the string of pearls i'm still waiting on them to be thicker you know grow more strands more branches and just generally fill up the area but until then you know there's nothing that i could really do for them right now and if you look further down where they drop there's this little void that i left it is a reserved area this is supposed to be some sort of waterfalls and where there are waterfalls there's lots of turbulence so i'm thinking that to to represent the splash maybe a spiky shape 
plant would work really well and I've got a bunch of Pachyveria bea which I think would look really great for this area since they are also slightly blue and they provide a different texture to contrast against the Echeveria elegans which covers most of the ground you know, forming the sea. There's a lot of clutter in the ground right now where the trucks used to be. Well, the trucks are still there but there are lots of pots just laying around. It's just that I haven't finished working on this area so I just have them there for easy access but a lot of these pots will be going out when I'm done. So yeah, this is a temporary setup. And moving along, we are now at the Patreon Shrine. Over the last few months, we have been working on a pergola, a freestanding pergola to cover the Patreon Shrine. The initial goal for the pergola was just to create some sort of anchor where I could place my shade cloth so that I do not have to worry about building a shade structure every year, every summer. With the pergola in, I can just hook in my shade cloth and not worry about uh, creating the structures and making sure that they are sturdy enough that they would withstand the winds. But now that the pergola is here, I have always wanted to work vertically and yeah, if you've been following the last few episodes, you would know that I worked on the ledges, a bunch of trailing and clump forming plants. I've also been working on a few baskets, so far two out of six. And a lot of you have been giving me suggestions on what sort of arrangements, sort of plant combinations I could use in my future baskets. So please keep those suggestions coming. I definitely appreciate them. So the Patreon Shrine. The Patreon Shrine is where I place sponsored plants. Because I have this sponsored tier on Patreon where my sponsors are given the opportunity to pick a plant, one of the plants that I place in the Patreon Shrine, give it a nickname, and I will be calling those plants by that name every time I show them. I am contemplating creating an actual sign, a little signpost, or you know something where I could show the name to make it more visible. So yeah, I'm still looking for suitable um, place markers or sign markers, signposts that would work with the design. Um, Possibly something that I could stick in the ground or maybe even just make one myself. It should be easy. Yeah, the more I think about it, it might have to be custom made because I am not sure. I am not sure that I like the plastic ones. I would definitely want something made out of wood or maybe even metal. <laughs> I don't know. So if you have any suggestion for the signboards or the sign plates or signposts, then let me know in the comments. Or you could hop over to my discussion group over in Facebook. The, just search for Series Capades discussion group. Send me some photos of, you know, um, design inspiration or ideas that we could use for the signpost. I think that would be better. Apart from the Patreon plants, we also have the Sea of Succulents. I originally called it the Sea of Blue because in the past incarnations, it was just mainly blue plants. But now I went for a gradient of blue and green because in my mind, the very healthy marine ecosystems are not just blue, you know, think coral reefs. There's a bunch of life and I think the colors tend to be a mix of blue and green. So maybe even some purple, you know, some plants, some of the corals and things like that, they might contrast against the, the whole thing. So there's a bit of diversity in the colors of the Sea of Succulents. And just to break apart the monotony of the elegance, I might create some contrast in the form of maybe a bit of red and yellow. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Moving along to the right again, this used, well, this is my tulip area. I have a bunch of tulip bulbs planted here actually. And the thing about tulips is that they only emerge in spring and they die out and <laughs> disappear for the rest of the year. So I'm starting to wonder if that was a good idea. When the tulips are there, they look really nice, but when they're not there, it's quite annoying. We have this empty space. And right now, because of the empty space, I just have a bunch of pots littering on the ground. And they have been there for a few years now. <laughs> Normally in my garden, when you see plants in pots and the pots look out of place or they look like they have just been dumped in there, that means that those plants are in temporary areas. I just have them in pots that way I can move them into the place that I want them to be, especially since I usually have plants of 
planting them directly in the ground. So everything that you see here on the tulip area is temporary. No plants planted in the ground yet. I think I might wait for the next time that the tulips bloom. That way I know where they are. I could maybe even consolidate all of my tulips and place them in one area. That way I know where the tulips would come out and I could have the rest of the area uh, uniformly, you know, at least have a unified design for my succulents. I would be planting succulents in the ground to contrast against the tulips. So pardon the mess of all of the pots that are littering the area because this is just temporary. And hopefully if I do things correctly, I would be able to work on this in spring because before that, currently it's autumn, I will be working on a bunch of other landscapes before this there's a there's this queue going on so i'm so glad i'm done with the patreon shrine because i might be able to work on the agavoids area next and then maybe another section which i'll be showing you in a while now moving along again you are now seeing my i'm not sure what to call this i think this is some sort of a nursery for some of the ground cover plants and some of my collectible plants the problem with this area though well i have a i have a shelf thing going on here so they are quite um they're well exposed and this is the northern fence we are in the southern hemisphere which means that during winter based on the position of the sun this area is always shaded because the sun is lower in the horizon which means that this spot is perfect for plants that are just starting off starting out plants that have not plants that are not yet used to sunlight so i usually have them here plants that i really want to protect but there's one problem in this area if you look closely there's a tree or a shrub at the back it is actually a fl flowering shrub yeah i think it's a shrub it's not a tree and every year it puts out lots of flowers and it sheds all of those flowers it usually happens every winter and we're getting there once the flowers are spent all of these petals fall on my pots and my plants they cover them and due to all of the rains that we get every winter my plants are constantly wet a lot of them have rotted through the years and i haven't really been protecting them that much so i might work on a makeshift covering just some shade cloth i guess yeah i'd have to think about that but we're getting close to winter so that's something i have to do really soon and moving back a bit we're now at the playground area and surrounding the playground is a bunch of uh, large pots. On the left side, it's mostly just my Aeonium because again, like I said, when they are in pots, it means it's temporary because I am working on a new Aeonium display area, which I'll be showing you in a bit. And right now, I do not have a place for them. So they are just dumped here. On the right side are some of my mother-in-law's plants. We even have a vegetable garden in here. <laughs> Right now we're done with our tomatoes I think. We have already harvested all of them so the vines are starting to die out. We also have a bunch of pumpkin as you can see in the ground. We have some spring onions, bitter gourd, uh, chili, spinach and a bunch of other... I think we also had some beans at some point. But anyway we have a bunch of vegetables which we just grow here. Around our clothesline we just have a bunch of random succulents in the ground just serving us edgers or you know just lining the whole thing and moving along again we are finally at the last part of the backyard which is this side facing our kitchen and that column there is our water heater it looks like this place is just overgrown and i've also got a lot of pots again they are temporary there used to be this arc of um Echeveria elegance and blue chalk sticks in this area and in the middle of that arc used to be this huge Echeveria Mauna Loa so I've already ripped it out and placed it in another pot My plan for this autumn and parts of winter is to rip out this whole thing and make this my well part of this my Aeonium display area and maybe put some of the large Echeveras back in again because I really need a space for all of them I'm still contemplating whether I would plant the large echeveras in the ground again. The ones that I do put here, they tend to bend diagonally because they're trying to get more sunlight. This spot is well lit, but the problem is it's too close to the house that, of course, they're going to be shaded when the sun is being obstructed by the house, which is why I was mostly thinking of using some plants that are not as sun-dependent. 
like Echeveria. So maybe I could just use my Tulip area as my Echeveria display for the large plants and this part would be for the clumping plants. Anyway, I haven't really thought of a definite design for that yet but we will be working through that during winter. Up next are the plants on the pergola. We have a few shelves in here. On this shelf is where my mother-in-law places all for cacti and some soft plants. And if you move further back, we have this little space which I call the alcove. I have a lot of my shade tolerant plants in here. So that includes some of the Haworthia, Gasteria, some aloe, some, some of the smaller Aeoniums, Sempervivums. Well, they are technically not shade loving plants, but they love this area, especially since they, are, they get protected during summer. During summer, they only have a couple of hours of direct sunlight when the sun is right overhead. But for the most of the day, they are being shaded since it is a spot between the house and the alfresco. There's a lot of roof protecting them throughout the day. And finally, we're moving along to the far side of the alfresco where I have a bunch of shelves for my plant nursery and my plant shop plants. <laughs> So on the top level of my left shelf are some of the small plants that I'm planning to put on sale. Unfortunately, I haven't had much time, free time to prepare them. But then there's the complication of the impending community quarantine. So I'm not sure if I would be able to post some plants in the near future. But anyway, that's it for the tour. If there's anything that you wanted to see, let me know down in the comments. I might create a dedicated video about it or at least just create uh, some sort of separate reel or I don't know, just let me know what you want to see and I'll see you in the next episode. In the next few episodes, I'm going to work on my plans for the rest of the garden, as I mentioned earlier. I think I'm going to be mainly working on the succulent stream and then the Philippines before I start working on the Agavoides area because the Agavoides area requires a bit of planning and I haven't really finalized any of my plans yet. It might even need some trips to Bunnings and again, there's an impending community quarantine and I have to, to wait for further announcements to see what we are allowed to do, what sort of movements is allowed. If that includes not being able to go to Bunnings, then I might have to delay it further and just work on the things that I could work right now. So, yeah. But in any case, I hope you guys are keeping safe. Please stay healthy. Practice social distancing. Do not unnecessarily expose yourself and i'll see you in the next episode subscribe if you want to see more of these like the video if you enjoyed dislike if you didn't and i'll see you in the next one bye